Nestled deep in the Himalayan foothills, between Dali and Lijiang, lies a small, ancient village where time has been frozen from a thousand years ago. Mud brick houses glitter throughout the town, colorful rice fields swaying in the wind. Almost complete silence, aside from local craftsmen and horses strolling through the cobblestone streets. Smells of blooming flowers and fresh Yunnan coffee. Warm sun rays piercing my skin and ice cold water flowing through canals and under the Yujin Bridge. This place was once an important village on the Tea Horse Road. But now, a beautifully preserved, traditional way of life that offers a glimpse into a forgotten era. Welcome to Shashi. It was just recommended to me when I did the Tiger Leaping Gorge hike and people just said that this is one of their favorite towns that they came to because it's just so small. I mean honestly I think you can walk this entire place in maybe 30 minutes if that. You can do the whole thing, maybe even 15 to be fair. It's just so cute and they have a lot of cool trinkets and things you can buy and it's just a really good place to relax. That's kind of what Jordan and I have been doing, just coming here and relaxing. So many different coffee shops, so many different art stores, bought some nice earrings. Yeah, it's just really liking it. By the Ming and Qing dynasties, Shashi Valley was flourishing in trade. It attracted people from different ethnic groups and cultures like the Hani from southern Yunnan who traded tea and cloth, the Muslim Hui who brought yak furs and horses, and the Nashi from Lijiang who traded timber. Today there are roughly 22,000 inhabitants left, 80% of them being ethnic Bai, and most of them are still living off the land as agriculture remains a primary source of livelihood. Dali and Lijiang, the surrounding cities, both receive an excess of 5 million visitors per year, while Shashi, on the other hand, is lucky if it even sees 10,000. This is why this place is so wonderful and often favored by overseas travelers interested in seeing conservation and restable development rather than, you know, endless souvenir shops and millions of other tourists because it's the perfect getaway location to relax and feel like you are back in time as Shashi is the best preserved city on the Southern Silk Routes. Just walking around this area, there's not a lot of people here at all. It almost kind of feels like a ghost town. It's just so like peaceful and quiet and I don't know, this just, look, there's like little riverways along the town. You can walk across these little bridges of water. And this just whole place is so adorable. There's no pollution, no airport nearby, no traffic jams. In fact, 
hardly any vehicles at all, as it can be quite a journey to even get here in the first place. The only time this place gets a bit crowded or noisy is on Fridays, when people will trek down from the mountainous villages to the town, dressed in their colorful traditional clothing, and leading pack mules carrying large baskets on their back to shop at the Friday market. Unfortunately, we didn't get to see this, but nonetheless still discovered a lot of local culture and hidden gems. Down one of the small cobblestone alleyways where it seems like a dead end, stands the Uyong House, home for the past 100 years to muleteers who became the town's leading innkeepers at the turn of the 20th century. You pay 10 RMB and you can come in, you walk into this courtyard here, and then she will open and unlock this door behind me and show you, I'm assuming, like a traditional house or something like that. At the time, we honestly had no idea how significant this house actually was due to the language barrier, but it was obvious this house was special and had kept its structure in good condition to how it was originally built. Hmm. The first door we walked through led us to the family stables, where passing traders once housed their mules and ponies. Beautiful. <laughs> you drink? Set. Ah, they drink it. What's in it? Well. Back in the 1880s, the Uyongs lived off an alley referred to as Sang Fang Jie, meaning they shared the alley with two other households. In the early 1900s, they opened their house to passing caravans, offering food, lodging, and entertainment. The business became so popular and profitable that the family was able to renovate and enlarge their house even more. Through the main gate of the house is a large courtyard surrounded on three sides by connected buildings. It is a traditional Bai style home, many of which still stand in Shashi today. This place is really cool. We don't exactly know maybe what we're looking at just because of the language barrier, but it's this is definitely an old house and the lady still lives here and she's just showing us around. It's all still kept in place and it's just very cool. Oh, maybe there's more? There? Okay, we're gonna go see some more. I think. Oh, okay, cool. Oh, shit, shit. Whoa. Oh. She pointed up this narrow, dark, steep wooden staircase that led to a very large, dim, but empty room. You think I should go back down? She then opened the shutter so we could see the house down into the courtyard. Oh wow, you can see the whole place. And then when we turned around, the light revealed the family shrine. Wow. During its time, the memorial was said to be the most splendid in Shashi because of its intricate woodworking detail and glass pane doors, which was extremely rare and expensive in Yunnan at the time. The lady just brought us upstairs and it's just so cool up here. It's all really dusty and old and... This place is a testament to a time when Shashi attained notable stature among the stops on the ancient trade route. And while we may not have known the significance while we were there, it was still very fascinating to walk through. Shishi! Bye bye, Shishi! <laughs> Wow, 
walking through the residential area right now and it's all just really cute and very quiet and a lot of these homes seem to have these like grand entrances with a bunch of trees, decorative trees lining the walls and there's a really long driveway up to the front door and it's just very nice here, it's so cute. It's a lot different than the downtown. The downtown feels a bit more put together. Oh my gosh, there's a dog right here. Hello. Okay, cut this vlog. Hi. Oh my goodness, Jordan, where are you? This is like your kind of dog. Gosh. Hello! Oh, oh my gosh! Oh. She was <gasps> reaching! Oh my god! Hi! Oh. Oh, oh, she's so soft! You are so cute! Why is she kept here? She just wants some attention! Oh. She's oh so big gosh. like a bear! <laughs> my. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, you want a shake? Oh my nice god. to meet you too. She's so pretty. Oh, oh she's happy. Hey, you're such a good dog. Oh. Okay, well, I was in the middle of saying something, but then I met this gorgeous oh. dog. <laughs> but yeah, Jordan and I really like it. We just, like, walking through it feels very, I don't, like, not to say the town is not authentic, but just that they're really living here and it's just off of the actual downtown and this whole place is just like a fairy tale like it's all just so cute and we actually extended our stay here because <laughs> we really like it <laughs> rice fields right now it's not exactly the season but uh, there is a little bit planted here it's really nice and green you can see some of the workers right now working on it and I think like when it's season this whole place will be just covered in rice fields right in front of the town because the town of Shasi is just this area here and that will probably be so beautiful um, and then you've got these mountains in the background just this whole place is so picturesque I love it I love it so much <laughs> so cool I'm starting to think that we can never leave this town. Just like, look how cute it is. Oh my gosh, it's just like the most picturesque little town ever. I love it. The town does a good job reflecting the role of Shashi in ancient times. When horse caravans carrying tea or other products would stop here on their way to Tibet. And then the Tibetans would trade their horses for the Yunnan tea. You definitely can picture it while being here, and maybe it's because of all the horses left behind. I don't know. We keep just walking around being like, what is this place? It's <laughs> unbelievable. It's like a magic fairy tale. Very, very small, but so cool. I think Jordan and I can both agree that this was one of our favorite places we visited in China. Thank you guys 
so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed visiting Shasi because I definitely enjoyed it. Hope you're enjoying all my China videos. If you like my videos, remember to subscribe. You can check me out on Instagram if you want to see what I'm up to day to day because I like to post stories. And um, yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs> Bye, baby. Oh my gosh. It's making me sad to leave. <laughs> You're so oh sweet. You're so pretty. Oh, I don't want to you go. No. She's so happy. She's so sad. Oh, I'm sad to leave because she obviously do, right? like doesn't want us to I go. Know, what do we do? I can't. I'm gonna ruin this dog's day. Oh, I know. I know. This is I actually really shake. sad. I don't. Okay. Please sure. don't wave oh. again or else we can't ever leave. <laughs> She's like, no. Oh. Stay. Oh I'm so I can't, pretty. I can't leave you. She's you, so pretty. This dog's got it down. Like just put your paw. <laughs> Her ears are so fluffy. She doesn't even smell. <laughs>